Jonah is a character that we are all pretty familiar with. We learn about him being in the belly of the well as children, and it is often one of those stories that sticks with us as we mature into adults. This morning, my ask is that you will open yourself up to the Lord so that he will expound upon this text. We begin reading at the point where Jonah has gotten on the ship in hopes of traveling the opposite direction of where God told him to go. He is making an attempt to escape from the presence of the Lord because he is not happy with what God has asked him to do. So rather than to obey, Jonah decides to flee. Now I'm not sure that many of you are bold enough to admit that there have been times in your life where what God asks you to do does not sit well with you. We have been trained to never question God. And in that training, we often act as if we are so deep, saved and sanctified that we have never found ourselves in a position where we are upset with the Lord. But can I be honest with you this morning? There have been times in my life where I have wondered if God has gotten me mistaken with somebody else. I have questioned his will and his plan for my life because based on my limited knowledge and understanding, I cannot fathom the thought of fulfilling what he has required. I am also learning that the same God that I don't always understand is the same God that is bound and determined to get out of me what placed in me by any means necessary. Jonah has been asked to go deliver a word to the people of Nineveh and because these people are known as his enemies, he has an issue with the Lord and his request. Let's be real clear. Nobody gets excited about going into the enemy's camps, especially when the word you are asked to bring will cause them to repent and be forgiven. And so here we find Jonah fleeing, and the Bible says that the Lord hurled a great wind. Now, I could just stop right there because many of us associate the winds in our lives with the attacks of the enemy, not understanding that there are some storms that you bring upon yourself. Everything is not the devil's fault, but there are some winds that you feel due to your own fault. Jonah's attempt to escape from God's presence has caused a storm on the sea. Jonah had no problem hearing that I knew of, but his refusal to carry out God's command has caused an uproar. And now to make matters worse, the Bible says that the well-being of the ship was being threatened. Now, that may have been okay if Jonah was the only one on the ship, because after all, he was the one doing the running. But I've never seen a race take place with just one person. That means that when one runner steps outside of their lane, they impact someone else in the next lane. Jonah has other people involved in his mess. Let me tell you something this morning, your disobedience affects more than you. God never calls you to a work that only involves self, but he calls you to walk in such a way that the lives of the people that come in contact with you are touched. That's why I can't understand how so many of us can come to church and act one way on Sunday and totally opposite on Monday, as if the God that we serve can't see from one day to the next. Tell somebody this walk is not about you. The storm got so bad that the passengers started to panic. They started throwing stuff overboard and praying to their gods, yet nothing seemed to calm the storm. In all of this, Jonah was said to be fast asleep down in the hold of the ship. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a major problem with this part of the text. Because if I have read this story correctly, Jonah was the one that was fleeing. And because of his desire to flee, Jonah was the one that has caused the storm. Yet now we find that Jonah is asleep. And not just asleep, but he is sound asleep. I got a real problem with Jonah right about now. I want to know how Jonah can sleep in the midst of all of this commotion. I mean, couldn't he feel the boat breaking or the, hear the storm raging? Couldn't he hear? Hear the passengers panicking. How in the world could Jonah sleep knowing that he was in disobedience? Because when I am outside of the will of God, resting is the last thing that I can do. After all, we're not just talking about a random person. We're talking about one of God's prophets. 
This man hears from the Lord. This man has a relationship with the Lord. How is it that he is not warring on the inside but sound asleep in his disobedience? Jonah could sleep because he felt justified and therefore became comfortable in his disobedience. Jonah had become so comfortable that he found rest while the ship was being rocked. How many of you have gotten to a point where you justify your disobedience to the Lord? Well, God, I'm not going to do this because they did that. God, I'm not going here because of this and that. All the while you are justifying, you are creating a stormy environment that negatively affects everybody around you. When you get to the point where you can rest in your disobedience. You make it dangerous not only for yourself, but for the people around you because by any means necessary, if God has required something of you, he will get it. God wants what he commands. 